Hey guys, and welcome back. On today's episode of Design to Move, we're gonna tackle vertigo in the vestibular ocular reflex. Motion sickness, dizziness, instability, ocular headaches are all associated with this common issue. So today we're gonna to educate you on the topic, including the anatomy involved, the mechanisms that could be at play, how to assess for it, and a suggested intervention for those dealing with the issue. As always, if you have any questions, reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. Let's get started. So what is dizziness and vertigo anyway? Well, dizziness is defined as an unpleasant disturbance of spatial orientation, and vertigo is a type of dizziness related to the perception of the movement of either one's own body or the environment around them. There are many types of vertigo, including central vertigo, including the vestibular structures in the brainstem, and cranial nerves, peripheral vertigo, including the structures of the inner ear, and cervical vertigo involving the structures of the neck. One specific common form of peripheral vertigo is known as benign proxismal peripheral vertigo, mouthful. It involves small crystals in the cochlea and it can dislodge and they can affect the function of the inner ear. So what are the structures of this whole thing? Well, the vestibular system consists of a number of structures in both the peripheral and central nervous system. The smallest bones of the body, two small bones in the ear filled with fluid and sensory hair cells communicate with the eighth cranial nerve and the brain allowing to sense their body and surroundings relative to motion, head position, and spatial orientation. The vestibular ocular reflex is a mechanism of the vestibular system which integrates sensory, vision, and movement inputs with a motor or muscular output. Simply, the vestibular ocular reflex is the process by which one is able to maintain balance and stability while the eyes and head are constantly moving. When the head moves in one direction at a given speed, the vestibular ocular reflex engages to create a motor response of the eyes in the equal and opposite direction, readjusting the visual world consistently or continually. So now we're going to get into the mechanisms associated with the issue. Vertigo can have a variety of causes including stroke, traumatic brain injury, infection, migraine, head and neck injury, along with all sorts of other things. Again, the dislodging of the tiny crystals of the inner ear are a common factor and tightness in the suboccipital and cervical muscles can also contribute to this dizziness and vertigo. The signs and symptoms of vertigo can vary depending upon the type, but in general, this condition is characterized by the altered perception of movement of the surrounding environment in the absence of actual sensory input, often caused by head movements or changes in position, such as moving from laying down to sitting up. This sensation can lead to nausea, vomiting, and fainting, and tends to come in the form of episodic attacks rather than a constant sense of dizziness. These attacks can last anywhere from seconds to days depending upon the cause of the symptoms. A closer physical exam will show abnormal eye movements called nystagmus, or rapid involuntary eye movements, or corrective jerking movements between the fixation points. The direction of the nystagmus can give, mo or give more information about the type of vertigo and should be observed and diagnosed by a healthcare professional. So how can we maintain a healthy vestibular system? Like any muscle or system in the human body, the vestibular system can be trained and improved. One of the best ways to maintain the health of the vestibular system is through balance training, specifically the use of the head and body movements. Training the vestibular ocular reflex in a variety of directions while maintaining a balance position, such as a single leg balance, can help to strengthen the sensory connection of the eyes to the brain in unstable circumstances. So now that we know the systems involved, we're going to show you how to assess for vertigo with the vestibular ocular reflex. While sitting in a chair, hold one arm straight out in front of you with your thumb up and gaze focused on the thumbnail. Turn the head to the side, keeping the eyes focused on the thumbnail. Note any symptoms including spinning of the environment, inability to focus your gaze, nausea, or dizziness. Perform this again, moving the head up and down. If the assessment triggered any signs or symptoms, you can take advantage of the next segment. Here we're going to show you how to release the muscles that are traditionally short and restrictive of the head and neck mechanics. In this case, we're going to be targeting the suboccipitals and scalenes. Then you'll want to increase the strength of the deficient muscle groups, the deep cervical flexors. Once a more natural base position is established for the head and neck, we'll integrate the vestibulo-ocular reflex with a balance drill. 
Remember, this doesn't substitute medical guidance, but is a suggested intervention associated with the issue. Make sure to reach out to a qualified health provider if you're experiencing any symptoms. First, we're going to release the scalenes with a self-mobilization exercise. The scalene muscles are three paired muscles, anterior, medial, and posterior, located in the lateral aspect of the neck adjacent to the sternocleidomastoid. This is the big ropey muscle on the lateral side of your neck. The scalenes act as accessory respiratory muscles and perform flexion and rotation for the neck. The anterior middle scalenes attach to the cervical spine to the first rib, while the posterior attaches to the second rib. Using your index finger and middle finger, define where the collarbone and sternocleidomastoid are located. The scalenes can be found by extending the neck and laterally tipping it to the opposite side. You'll feel the muscles stretch under your fingers. Explore the area defining the front, middle, and back segments. Once you've established their location, tilt the head to the same side to soften the muscles, then add gentle pressure into the anterior scalene until you feel a gentle pull on the neck. Hold the pressure on the muscle until you feel it relax. This can take upwards of 60 seconds. Once the muscle releases, gently tilt your head to the opposite side of the body and rotate your chin towards the same side. Only stretch until you feel the first barrier for resistance. Make sure that there is no pain felt. Hold the position for roughly 10 seconds, then resume the process and stretch a little bit further by repeating the actions until a new barrier of stretch is found. Again, make sure no pain is felt. Once you've gone through the process, complete the same steps on the middle and posterior segments before moving on to the other side. Now we're going to release the suboccipitals. The suboccipital muscles are a group of four muscles situated underneath the occipital bone. They attach the head to the first two cervical vertebrae and are located within the suboccipital compartment of the neck, deep to the sternocleidomastoid, trapezius, and neck extensor muscles. Collectively, they act to extend and rotate the head. This is how you can define the muscles. Extend and rotate your head while palpating the area just medial to your mastoid process. You'll feel the muscles contract under your fingertips. Once you've established their location, look upwards to extend the head to soften the muscles then add gentle anterior and superior pressure until you feel a gentle pull on the head. Hold the pressure on the muscle until you feel it relax. This can take up to 60 seconds. Once the muscle releases, gently tuck your chin, nodding downwards while rotating your head to the opposite side of the body. Only stretch until you feel the first barrier for resistance. Make sure that there is no pain felt. Hold the position for roughly 10 seconds, then resume the process and stretch a little bit further by repeating the actions until a new barrier for stretch is found. Once again, make sure no pain is felt. Once you've gone through the process, complete the same steps on the opposite side of the body before moving on. Now we're going to target and strengthen the deep cervical flexors. The deep neck flexors consist of the longus coli, longus capitis, rectus capitis, and longus cervicus. All help you to maintain neck stability and good posture. These muscles are usually weak in relationship to their more superficial partners, the scalene and sternocleidomastoid. They attach directly to the cervical spine and aid in maintaining proper head and neck posture by flexing the upper neck, nodding the chin towards the chest, and pulling the head backwards on top of the cervical spine. These muscles are usually weak and are often associated with neck pain and dysfunction. To strengthen them, begin by standing upright with your head in its natural resting position. Begin the movement by bracing through your midsection, engaging your abdominals. Breathe in for two seconds while maintaining abdominal pressure, then tuck your chin, pulling your head backwards over your spine. You should feel your center of mass shift back into your heels. Make sure to keep your gaze straight ahead and resist looking downward as this may pull your neck into excessive flexion, compensating with your superficial flexors. At the end of the movement, your cheekbones should be in line with your collarbone. Hold the position for two seconds, then allow your head to move forward to its resting position. Complete the steps for 20 repetitions or for roughly two minutes of time under tension. Complete two sets, giving yourself one minute of recovery between each exercise before you move on. The last exercise is a single leg balance while maintaining a fixed gaze. This is an integrated exercise that factors in the vestibular ocular reflex. To perform the movement, shift your weight to your right leg, bracing your trunk and hip with your obliques and glutes on the same side. Lift the opposite side or leg into the air by flexing your hip flexors and internal obliques. Raise your right arm up to 90 degrees of flexion with your thumb up. Keep your chin tucked with your neck in extension. Rotate your head left to right while maintaining your gaze on the thumbnail. If you feel any dizziness or discomfort, reduce the movement of the head. 
Make sure that while rotating through the head and neck, your chin doesn't lift away from the chest. Complete 20 repetitions, alternating between right and left rotation. Complete two sets, giving yourself one minute of recovery between sets. That brings us to the end of our program here, guys. Again, we thank you for joining us. We appreciate you listening and taking in all the information today. Once again, this is just a couple of the relationships linked with these issues. So if you are experiencing symptoms, make sure to reach out to a qualified medical professional.